Thanks again for joining us for this week's Tuesday Truth. We're in a series called Spiritual Royale where we're looking at the armor of God. And, and I hope by now uh, you are learning just how important God's word is in our fight against Satan, our enemy. And, and I also hope that you're not just relying on a Tuesday Truth devotion for your intake of God's word, but that you are spending time in the Bible for yourself on a daily basis. So last week, I kind of introduced you to one of my favorite movie characters of all time, Gladiator. And, and we had this image of Russell Crowe in this shiny kind of breastplate. Well, I want you to think about a different kind of soldier today. And I want you to think about a typical Roman soldier. So have the image in your mind. You know, those kind of soldiers with that weird sort of red horse mane sticking out of their helmet. I don't know why they have that. But anyway, um, my guess is as you picture this Roman soldier... Not many of you thought about his shoes. You see, maybe you thought about this shield, this massive shield or this big, heavy sword. But how many of you thought about this incredibly piece, uh, important piece of armor, the soldier's shoes? You see, for a Roman soldier, it didn't matter how big his shield was or how sharp his sword was. If he didn't have the right shoes on, he would not be able to fulfill his duties as a soldier. A Roman soldier had very specialized leather sandals with studs on. And these shoes were critical for enabling a Roman soldier to march for long periods of time. They were also necessary for allowing that Roman soldier to be able to stand firm and not slip on loose gravel or, or slippery surfaces. As Christian soldiers, it is really, really important that we have the right shoes on. This is a very important piece of our spiritual armor. Because if we don't have the right shoes on, we will not be able to march the long distance over the course of our lives with Jesus. And we will not be able to stand when Satan comes with his temptations. So I'd like for us this morning to pick up again. We're in Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to read what Paul has to say about these shoes. Let's read from verse 14. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. According to Paul, the Christian soldier needs the following shoes, the readiness that comes from the gospel of of peace. What is Paul saying here? Well, there's three words there that I think are really important for us to unpack to understand this. The first one is the word gospel. What is the gospel? I'm not talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Gospel means good news. And essentially, it is this good, amazing news that sinners like me and you can actually have peace with God right standing with him. And this comes about by God making a way in sending his son Jesus to pay the price for our sin through his death on the cross and to be raised to life so that we can have new life with him. That's the gospel. And some of you guys are Christians today because you have believed and relied upon that good news. And believing that good news gives you peace. That's our second word, the gospel of peace. This peace is right standing with God. There's nothing worse than going through life feeling like you just are guilty before God. You're, you're a failure. Your sin is too much. We need to have a sense of peace in our relationship with God. And this comes about when we believe in what Jesus has done on our behalf. Our legal status is now right with God. and We can have peace with Him. And this is really important when the enemy comes with his his lies and his accusations telling us that we're useless and we're too sinful for God. We can stop and say, no, hold on a minute. I have peace with God because I have believed in the gospel, the good news. There is nothing that the devil hates more than truth. 
And the greatest truth that he hates is this gospel truth. Because when we believe it, he can't get to us. None of his lies will be able to take root in our hearts. But he also hates it when not only do we believe the gospel of peace for ourselves, but when we are ready to take it to others. And this is where the third word comes in, readiness. It's kind of this idea of, you know, in the morning you wake up and you, you know, you have a cup of coffee, you maybe have a shower, you get some breakfast, you get dressed, you brush your teeth, and then you are ready to go to school. It's like when we've believed the gospel for ourselves, there comes a point when we begin to realize that we can't keep it for ourselves and we need to be ready to take it to others. I hope that God's done that work in your heart where you feel ready to begin to be used by God to take the gospel of peace to others. But the reason that this is such a powerful weapon for us too is because not only is sharing the gospel with our friends beneficial for them, but it's also beneficial for us. Let me give you an example. Two weeks ago, Friday night, X squared, our youth group, if you, if you haven't kind of come, come along, it's amazing. After my talk, I call the teenagers to respond and at least three of them give their lives to Jesus for the first time. And I have the opportunity of leading one boy myself to Christ. Can I tell you what that did for my own heart? As I saw the lights come on from, for him, as I saw him understand how he can have peace with God, you know what it did for me? It made me believe it in a fresh way again. It, it made my heart just understand in a new and, and fresh way the peace that I have with God as a result of believing the gospel. This is what it means, this readiness of the gospel of peace, readiness to take this gospel of peace to our friends. It is an important weapon in our armory. If you want to fight against doubt, temptation, lies, accusations from the enemy, put on the boots of telling your friends about Jesus. Your own heart will begin to believe it in fresh ways and the lies of the enemy will disintegrate in that moment. So how do we put these shoes on? This is a whole devotion on its own, but let me just quickly chat about three things. So the first thing is start by praying for your non-Christian friends. Later on in this series, we're gonna look at the power of prayer and how Satan runs when God's people pray. But pray for your non-Christian friends and pray for opportunity for you to be able to share Jesus with them. Secondly, when you sense an opportunity, tell them about Jesus. And it doesn't have to be in a weird way. Just tell them what Jesus has done for you. Tell them how you've been forgiven. Tell them how you have peace with God. And then thirdly, challenge them to respond. Don't just leave them with the gospel message. Say, hey, where are you at? Do you believe this for yourself? Do you, do you feel like you're a sinner? Do you feel like you need God's peace? And hopefully, by God's grace, you have an opportunity to lead someone to the feet of Jesus. So, guys, maybe this is a scary thought for you. Just start with prayer. But my challenge to you is that you would begin to be ready to go and take this message to those of your friends who don't yet believe it. And as you do this, your own heart's going to benefit and you're going to have an important piece of your army and your fight against the enemy. Guys, have a great week. I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to see you guys on Friday night at X squared as we uh, kind of continue in our series, Faithful Exiles. So make sure that you pre-register for that. It's going to be a blast. See you guys soon. Cheers.